Hey, how's it going everybody? Bert Brian here. Welcome back to yet another To All Can Tuesday. In this video series, I like to give you updates on my life and the future of the channel, answer random questions and talk about topics submitted by you, the fine viewers, and of course, drink some good beer. And uh, today I definitely have a, a real interesting one to say. I don't know how, I don't know how good it's going to be, but uh, check out the label on this. So this is the uh, Nutsack Double Brown Ale. And where's this from? From Engine 15. Uh, brewing company again. I just love the little squirrel holding his nutsack there I don't know how the how this really got through uh, To be put out on the shelves, but definitely a really awesome hilarious looking label I've seen a lot of really funny and, and interesting labels pop up lately uh, But anyway, this one's out of Jacksonville, Florida where I was actually born uh, at uh, Memorial Hospital So that's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and pop the top I don't know much about this. It doesn't say uh, the alcohol content, but I did look it up uh, online and it says it's like an eight and a half percent or so and it's exactly what I would expect for a, a brown ale it's got a nice dark color to it but again slightly um, you know like not super black dark or anything like you'd expect from a stout but a very malty beer in general um, you can kind of see through it just a little bit just a little tiny bit anyway yeah definitely smells strong malty kind of up front smell like a toffee kind of thick richness to it. I don't know. Let me give it a taste. Whoa. Definitely really good. It's it's sweeter than I thought it was going to be all around. I mean, first impression is pretty tasty. We'll see how it goes uh, chugging this thing down here. I don't have a whole lot of questions today, but uh, I just want to say thanks to those who did submit some. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear me talk about in next week's video, be sure to leave them down below in the comments or visit me on Facebook and leave them there or, or Twitter or wherever else, and I'll be sure to get to them. Uh, but, um, oh yeah, first thing I got to start off with, in case you guys notice, like this little spot here, don't worry, it's not the herp or anything. Uh, I actually made a stupid mistake the other night. I was smoking some beef brisket. It was absolutely amazing. It came out great. But I just noticed that I still had like three hours until it was going to be done. And I was starving, hadn't eaten all day, so I ordered some Domino's pizza. And I was pretty hammered by the time I got here. I barely remember, you know, slicing the meat and tasting it and all that. But um, apparently I just like, I dug right into that pizza as fast as I could. And it was molting hot cheese that just kind of burned the side of my face. Um, so that kind of sucks. So I learned, uh, I, I got to, you know... Be careful when I'm getting hammered drunk and trying to eat food. Anyway, <clears throat> let's jump right into this one. So my friend Rudy on Facebook says, how to pair, yes, he's asking me how to pair good wine with what type of food. Um, you know, I'm really not an expert at all when it comes to wines. I've had several. I can tell you what my favorites were. I remember when I was younger, to me, like red wines were really not all that good at all. I kind of hated how dry they were. And then as I got older and tried more and more of them, I started to kind of grow an appreciation for the dryness and the flavor. And, you know, it really all depends. If I'm going to be drinking a, a dry red wine, I kind of want something like maybe a juicy steak or something that's going to be, I don't, I don't even really know at all how to pair. I mean, I, I just... In Italian restaurants, pretty much your go-tos are going to be red wines. You might have a Sauvignon Blanc. You know, you might have, um, uh, I, I don't know, like, I, I really never drank a whole lot of, like, of, of wines. I, I've had some, I guess my favorites are the sweeter ones. Like, I kind of like Moscato wine because it's, it, the grapes are just so much sweeter than a lot of the other ones. Um, I kind of like a Chardonnay from time to time. And then I think uh, Zinfandel, is that what it's called? I don't know. There's, there's damn it, I'm trying to think. There's one that's like a, a combination of, of Chardonnay and, and something else. It was like VS. may have been a Zinfandel. I don't know. But anyway, those are my kind of wines. Uh, my favorite would probably be one from St. Augustine out of, uh, I probably can't even think of the, the, the winery, the San Sebastian winery. And their Venter's Red is just amazing. To me, it's... They kind of just taste like Welch's grape juice, and you, know, you could drink it with anything, drink it any time. It was just so sweet and tasty, and you know, totally different than what I'd expect from a normal table red wine. But um, yeah, sorry, I am not if you know a grand sommelier, so I really don't know how to, to pair wines all that well. I never got too much into that. I'm probably better now at pairing beers with certain foods than I am uh, wines. But anyway, thanks for the question, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
it's crazy that strong malty presence in this really kind of gives this kind of a uh, like a, a porter kind of a taste to it. Really pretty interesting. Uh, Flint Quinch, good friend who's uh, been constantly asking me a lot of great questions. Appreciate all the support, man. He asks, do you game at all? And yeah, um, I do game. I've actually, I've been playing games since the very first Atari's came out. I mean, um, you know, my, my dad has always kind of been on the edge of cutting technology, and so he always kept us up to date. Like, you know, we had the Atari 800, the 1200, the 1600, the 2400, or the 2800, I don't know. We had so many different models. And even back then, we were part of some of the first hacked video games because back then we had them on the giant um, uh, five and a quarter uh, inch floppy drives, those big, huge floppy disks. And I, we still to this day, my, my brother has them at his house, but a whole collection of all these bootleg games that some friend of his had copied onto these. And we even had a boot disk that we would put into our uh, disk drive for the Atari. And so, I mean, we had so many awesome free games. It was pretty cool. So, you know, like I said, I've been gaming since all the way back then. Had the Nintendo, had the uh, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, had Sega CD, had the Dreamcast, had the Neo Geo, had... Um, uh, Turbo Graphics had, uh, Jesus, every one of them. They, I don't know if I said Nintendo 64 and then PlayStation 1, 2. Uh, never got into 3. That's kind of where I stopped. I, I went into Xbox and started playing with that. And then ultimately I got burned out by consoles because I feel like consoles are stifling the gaming industry and they're keeping technology down and everything down. Because, I mean, you're playing on the same console that you can't change the hardware on for... I mean, I think the the Xbox, before they came out with the new Xbox One, had been out for like eight or ten years, so it's all those years just doing hard, uh, just doing um, software updates and stuff, and just using the same outdated hardware, and I mean, with how fast technology changes, you know, you just really can't, you know, keep up with new, awesome video game graphics and stuff using that same outdated stuff. Don't get me wrong, they still looked cool and all, but recently I made the switch to gaming PC whenever I... You know, needed something to do better editing videos and for uh, editing videos and stuff like that. So I kind of put a little bit into this one to make it a little bit more of a gaming PC. So now I'm on Steam, and so if you see me, uh, you know, every now and then I play with the guys, uh, the Reckless Eating Crew over at uh, Zion Mainframe Gaming, and uh, we just have a whole lot of fun, fun playing uh, Steam, which just has a, an awesome selection of games. They're cheaper. It's like you know, you, I pay zero tax. Um, you know, they have a pretty good return policy, so if you really don't like a game, you can just give it back or trade it back and get your money. Whereas, you know, GameStop is the most horrible thing in the world, and they rip people off so bad on their trade-ins and their buybacks and all that. Um, you know, I, I really hate that that store now. I mean, it's just such a rip-off. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know. Uh, do any of you guys out there game? Anyone who watches these videos, let me know down below. If you play Steam, you can always look down in the uh, description of this video and check out my link and hook up with me there. Maybe we could play some games, Grand Theft or Chivalry or something like that. Uh, Flintwitch also asks, what would you pick as a superpower? Well, that's an interesting one. Let me go ahead and take a swig on this. If I had to pick a superpower, I mean, it's so hard because I have a lot of, of favorites. I mean, you know, one that I would really like would be to just never be able to die, like Deadpool. Um, it's pretty awesome. I mean, he can just have his body parts cut off and just literally stick them right back on and keep going. Um, there's also, like, I guess ultimately my all-time favorite character, comic book character is Wolverine. Always loved his comic books. I liked his rough, rugged, don't give a shit kind of attitude and with his super fast healing abilities, you know, nothing can really, you know, take him down too much. And then his bones being made of that super strong metal, of course, which makes him weak against like Magneto and stuff. But, and that was probably one of the coolest comic books ever where Magneto pulled all of the adamantium out of his Wolverine's body, so he just had these, like, you know, bone claws and stuff. Um, but, I don't know, I, I guess that that would probably be my, my all-time go-to, is either, like, a, a super-fast healing ability to where you basically can't die, or you're immortal, one or the other. Um, and I guess beyond that, maybe the ability to read and control people's minds, kind of like Xavier... And, of course, the ability to control metals and stuff. Those are all kind of in my high-ranking uh, superpowers of what I would want to be able to do. I don't know. 
I kind of just like the idea of being able to read minds and stuff and know what people are really thinking about you uh, behind your back. But anyway, thanks for the questions, man. Really appreciate it. Next up, we've got one from Devonshire Idiot and Company. I'm looking forward to doing a, a collaboration challenge with them sometime here really soon. Just been slacking. I really haven't had the motivation to do much of anything. That's why my channel, you haven't seen a whole lot of videos getting put up. Uh, that and without having a car, it's like I can't really go and do a lot of fast food reviews. It's just the nearest place is Taco Bell, and I get tired of just doing Taco Bell videos all the time. So haven't really been able to do any food reviews. <clears throat> and... Um, you know, I'm actually just trying to get over this cold right now. I had a fever all last week and then still had to ride my bike to 12 miles a day in the cold and work a 10-hour shift with the fever and the cough and all that. And, you know, surprisingly, I'm, I'm doing all right. I, I felt pretty good through it all. It's one of the easiest colds I've been through. Um, but uh, anyway, Devin Shire asks, place a celebrity in each of these categories. Snog, marry, destroy, or fuck, marry, kill, as uh, I like to say it over here. Um, well, let's see. I didn't really give this one too much thought. As soon as I saw Destroy Celebrity, the immediate one that came to mind is Kanye. I think, uh, I, I would love to just destroy Kanye West. I think he's the, the dumbest, dumbest bastard in the whole world. And the, the fans that enjoy the things, the dribble that comes out of his mouth are just uh, amazing to me. And I can't, I can't believe anybody actually supports that man and the things he says. And they're, they're just as stupid as he is. Um... But um, as far as snog or marry, just because of recently, I got to say, if I was going to snog somebody, it would be Stephanie from Full House or Fuller House, I should say now, because I started watching that show on Netflix. It just came out and I was like, you know, I had to, I had to peek it out, see what it was all about. And surprisingly, I found myself actually enjoying it a little bit. But uh, all of the girls got super hot. DJ is hot. Stephanie even Kimmy Gibbler is kind of decent looking, but Stephanie was unbelievable. I don't know the, can't remember the actress's name offhand, but uh, she looks really good. I would definitely snog her. As far as Mary goes, oh man, I don't even know. I don't, I really don't follow celebrities much at all. Um, the one that, that I guess comes to mind, um, god dang it, it's uh, such a tough one. Like maybe Alicia, oh man. I don't know. There's nobody that I'd marry. Alicia Silverstone, maybe. Um, I don't know, like Jennifer Love Hewitt, maybe something like that. They're they're all pretty uh, intelligent, you know, both intelligent women, both beautiful. Um, I guess I don't really look at anybody as married material because I don't ever really see myself getting married. Period. I'm just kind of more of a, you know, uh, I guess promiscuous kind of guy as it would be. But uh, anyway, appreciate the, uh, the question, man. Cheers. Next up, we've got Matt Trist Art. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's asked me, have you ever made your own homebrew? And yeah, actually, I've made a couple homebrews. I've done, what, three batches now. And then, of course, I had to move and pack everything up and come out here. And it's been a struggle just trying to get things back set up again. It's anywhere from fifty to eighty, or you know, fifty to a hundred dollars sometimes to do a, a certain brew recipe. Really, all dependent on how much alcohol and hops and things like that you want in your beer. Um, and of course, I did you know like one of the little one gallon kits, and that was neat. And then I did a five gallon recipe. Uh, I've done a couple five gallon recipes, and they both all came out really good. And and it was an awesome experience. I look forward to doing it again. The problem with Florida. Is it's just so damn hot here that in order to keep my beer at the proper, you know, whatever it is, like uh, in that 60 degree range, you know, I, I really don't know what to do. I mean, there's only a limited time out of the year during the cold winter, you know, our cold winter days that I can actually brew. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out a way or trying to find maybe a small refrigerator, or some sort of small cooler that'll fit my five gallon carboy in so that I can do another brew because um, <clears throat> it's just too hot, too swampy here. And uh, I, I've been looking at a lot of different mini fridges and stuff and just haven't found any with the right dimensions to fit the, the carboy in. But um, who knows, maybe I'll get another one going sometime soon. Um, I really did enjoy doing it. I thought it was a fun experience, fun process. It's neat to see it, you know, watch it as it develops and, and you know, uh, it's cool when you see the yeast start really activating and stuff. Uh, but anyway, appreciate the uh, question. And again, I, I actually did do a, a brief 
YouTube video kind of showing how I brewed a beer once, so I'll throw a link down in the description where you guys can go and check that out and see just kind of one of my first adventure, my, my first time trying to brew beer and see how that went. Um, all right, so that's pretty. That's all the questions I got. We're going to jump into some topics now. These are just a couple random things that I've been thinking about that have been on my mind. Uh, one, one thing in particular is, well, both of these have kind of pissed me off, grinding my gears a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take another swig here. All right, so <sighs> apparently there's this thing going around in the hot sauce community, and <clears throat> you know it was pretty much in particular this one group. And I'm not gonna say names, and I'm not gonna say group names. So I don't want to give any attention to that in that direction um, or to any of these people. But you know, some really childish attacks have been going on against people who don't do things a certain way, and. You know, when I do my reviews, I do often try to have some kind of food to eat with the sauce, although it's usually something generic, like a frozen pizza or tacos or something from Taco Bell. And, you know, apparently, and I, I don't see anything wrong with just doing a hot sauce review, tasting something just on the spoon itself. Some of these self-righteous assholes out there will tell you, you have to do things their way. You should sit there and, and for a week or more, you should try this sauce on all kinds of different foods and to see what it goes really well with. And to be honest, anybody who's had a whole bunch of sauces or has been involved in the culinary world at all can just taste something as it is. Like I could taste a sauce and go, ah, that needs salt. Or, you know, if I'm making spaghetti sauce, ah, this, this needs oregano, this needs a little more of this. It's, if you're somebody who's done this for a long time, you can taste something and go, ah, this would go really well with this type of food. You know, you don't have to try it. And so people are saying you can't use a spoon in a review, that that's not an acceptable way of doing review. And my counter to that is, okay, so if you're going to hold that logic true and you think it's, um, it's rude for somebody to do that and rate somebody's product, well then you really can't be a fan of hot sauce judging like competitions anywhere that happen at all of these little festivals that happen all across the nation. Because what? Do you think those judges actually sit there and prepare or have prepared for them a meal that specifically goes with each and every one of those hot sauces, the tons of hot sauces that they're going to have to try? No. What they try it on is either a spoon, a toothpick, some generic tortilla corn chip, and that's about it. And that's what they rate those things. That's how they judge them. So if you're going to be a hot sauce company that sits there and brags about how you got first place at such and such a festival at, or such and such contest, then you can't sit there and say, uh, you know, you can't review this just on a spoon. It's got to go with a bunch of food and you need to eat it for a week. That's bullshit. Then you can't, you just can't claim credit for having such a great sauce, an award-winning sauce, if you're going to be such a stickler like that. I mean, I'm sorry, I guess it just really pisses me off because... I mean, there are times when I, I'm just not able to, to do something with food. Sometimes all I've got is the sauce. And, you know, sorry, but I do things my way. And people do still value my opinions, whether I, I do it on food or I do it another way. And so, you know, just because I'm not doing it your way doesn't mean you have to be a dick and kind of say, oh, screw you and stick the middle finger out to all of those people who don't do things your way. That's immature. It's rude. And, you know, you really need to get that attitude in check and cut it out. I had to leave that one hot sauce group just because, I mean, it, it was supposed to be a group where they, in their rules, it says no negative, no drama, no starting, all this. And this person is a, a moderator for this actual uh, uh, page. And yet here he is starting drama completely contrary to the rules of the group. It's like, come on, man. This is, it's, it's bullshit. Um, so anyway, that's one thing that's pissed me off. Uh, one other thing that I want to talk about before I jump into a story to tell you guys, because I always kind of want to end these videos now with some kind of fun story to tell you about my life. Um, but, um, well, some of them are fun stories. Being held at gunpoint wasn't fun. But they're entertaining anyway. Uh, the other one that I, I want to talk about is, you know, it's crazy what people can get away with. I mean, it, it is, I don't know, I have such a hard time with beautiful people, I guess, or good-looking people. And it bothers me so much because the, the so many people just think, well, so many guys anyway, think with their dick and not their head. And so the problem you have with that is you get some girl like, I'm not going to say her name again, but there's this YouTube person who I started watching, them, watching her because she made a lot of really good videos, like gaming videos. She was doing old school video games and some current video games. And 
it was interesting to hear her take and watch some of you know her play some of those games. But then it slowly kind of started turning into this sexual thing. So and then it was her like wearing underwear and reading words out of the dictionary and. It was uh, twerking videos all of a sudden, and this is a girl who really, you know, had no skill or at twerking or anything, and I just kind of was like, all right, you know, you're losing me here, so I unsubscribed, and the other day I had to just go back and see, well, maybe she's back to doing some gaming videos, let me check it out, and I see a video of just her ass just sitting to, like, imagine this half of the screen is just her ass, and then over here, it's another, it's a little picture-in-picture -picture video of Shoe Nice, and she's sitting there commenting commentary on this video just with her little ass just sitting there, a little butt cheek kind of jiggling around or whatever. And I'm like, God damn, how fucking hard up do you have to be that you're out there just showing your ass and all these dumb asses that are commenting and sending money to her Patreon account and all these other things. It's like, come the fuck on, no talent whatsoever, no skill. And yet she's got 6,000 more subscribers than me. And, you know, at first I wasn't going to do anything, and a buddy of mine said, no, I challenge you, you really should do a parody video. So I just might do that. You know, I'll, I'll try to warn you guys, because it's just going to be my hairy ass sitting in, like, a thong or something, and I'll be commenting on, maybe I'll commentary on her video or something. Maybe that would be kind of fun, so it would be my ass talking about her ass. I don't know. Um, but uh, it's just, it's a crazy world we live in that, you know, People who really put hard work, time, and effort, and energy into making their videos don't really get the recognition or credit they do, but some some bimbo that just shows her ass and jiggling it around, you know, manages to get so many views and likes and is bringing in ad revenue and all that. It's, it's just insane to me. It's just a screwed up world we live in. But uh, anyway, on that note, let me go and take another swig out of this before I jump into some kind of story. So I actually, a while back, wrote down a whole list of different stories to tell you guys because I was kind of in a retrospective mood and I wanted to make sure I just got all of these ideas down. So again, that's the whole point is every week at the end of these videos, I'm going to try to come up with some kind of story from my past to tell you guys and um, hopefully you like it. If you want to hear certain kinds of stories, let me know. I got all kinds of stuff, but this one's going to be more of a, um, I guess, a drug story, if you will, because uh, as much as I hate to admit it, not bragging or anything, but I've... I've tried just about everything under the sun as far as uh, uh, mind-altering substances go, though uh, never anything involving needles. I would never stick a needle in my arm in any way, uh, shape, or form. Um, you know, as far as like drugs that you would inject, I have probably snorted them or or uh, eaten them. That's mixed in with a, a you know an ecstasy pill or something. It's it's been there. But uh, anyway. Uh, this one particular night, for some reason, I don't know why, I just decided this was going to be a night that uh, I'm not going to do any kind of mind-altering substances. I'm going to relax, just hang out with friends and kind of watch them and see what happens. And, you know, all of my friends were, they were dropping liquid acid that night. Uh, I guess it was like a friend of a friend. I don't even really know who this kid was. But uh, <clears throat> he came to hang out with our crew and he brought this little, you know, like Listerine bottle and it was full of liquid acid and, you know, of course you could put drops on a, a sugar cube, which we did have some sugar cubes, people were doing it that way, other people were just dosing it right on the tongue and going from there and uh, it was a crazy wild night. I remember um, at some point in the night we needed, we needed weed, you know, and I was the only sober one so I borrowed one of my friend's cars that were there and the kid who had brought the, uh, the acid, everyone was telling me, hey, hey, you know, he wants to get some weed too, why don't you take him with him, uh, but tell him, that, you know, make sure he leaves the acid here, and then we'll watch it, and I was like, yeah, that's, you know, I don't want to be driving around with that stuff anyway, so I told him, yeah, look, if you're going to come with me, you know, come, but you got to leave that here with somebody, like, I, I don't want that in the car, so he happily, you know, left it there, meanwhile, everybody's dosing up while, I, while we go to get some weed and stuff, and, uh, and we come back, you know, and, and it's just a crazy fun time, everybody's doing the normal stuff, like, you know, glow sticks and, and um, you know, listening to a lot of techno music and whatnot and, you know, looking at tracers and, and having all that fun stuff. But uh, at one point in the night, you know, everybody was kind of sitting on, or a bunch of people were sitting on my buddy's bed and right above he had these giant, like, double-tubed fluorescent, like, black lights that shined down and coated the whole room in black light. It was really awesome. So it was super bright black light in there. 
and um, you know everybody's like passing around this little bottle and they're all dosing each other and you know it got to Nick and you know somebody you know say hey I'll dose you he's like no, no I'll do it myself I'm fine so they're like okay so they give him the bottle and um, it was absolutely insane I mean he he went to dose himself but instead of just giving like a drop or two you know, all of a sudden I look and there's this, you could see it glowing under the black light, like it glue this bright white color and it was just pouring down his chin and he looks with this horrified, surprised look on his face that's full of liquid mouth, I mean his mouth is just full of this liquid acid and, and uh, you know, he jumps up in shock and horror, goes running to the door, running to the bathroom, tries to spit it out. I mean, there's really not a whole lot you can do at this point. It's absorbing in everywhere in his mouth. It's absorbing into his face. I mean, that uh, I, I can't even imagine. That had to really suck. But I remember uh, he came back into the room, and we had another friend. I'm not going to say his name, but he was a real asshole. All my life, this guy was just, you know, this was kind of like the hangout spot. It was a dirty little grungy fucking room that everybody hung out in. And, uh... You know, he's just always been a scumbag, just a real asshole to everybody. As long as I've ever known him, just always a dick trying to make himself look better. You know, he's this, you know, dude with a giant, f ugly fro. I mean, he was a, a stupid fucking guy. And, uh, but, you know, I remember him just, again, in his always asshole attitude, he looked at my friend and said, you know, because our, our friend that night earlier was saying he'd never really seen visuals. And our friend said, oh, you've never seen visuals? Huh? Well, you will now. And just started laughing at him and picking on this guy who just overdosed. And, and is obviously, you can see, he's freaking out a little bit about it. You know, it's like, why would you be such a dick and say something like that? But this poor guy, I mean, uh, th that whole night was so hard for him. He kept, like, leaving the room and coming back in the room. He'd sit down and try to piddle with the guitar and couldn't come up with anything. <coughs> and I remember... One time he just really wanted a cigarette and he comes in, everybody gets quiet and he's standing there for like, for like at least two minutes just kind of like, <sighs> uh, I, uh, and he just couldn't get it and finally he's like, I, I, can I get a cigarette? And everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, finally you want a cigarette? Here. And uh, it was just, it was a crazy night. I think it turned out that same night he goes home, or not same night, but the next day, still tripping out the next day. He goes home, and his sister, I guess, had decided to play a prank on him and had flipped everything in his room upside down. I'm talking pictures on the wall were upside down, the desk, the bed, everything in the whole place was flipped. Posters were turned upside down, everything. And so he just walks in, still with, like, residual tripping going on, and sees his entire room is completely upside down, just backwards, completely crazy. And um, I'm sure that had to mess with him a little bit, too. But man, what a crazy, crazy experience and night. And I've had a lot of crazy, uh, you know, drug stories, I guess. I mean, I've, I've uh, had some real interesting things happen. I, um, you know, I, I remember one night uh, I was actually rolling on ecstasy. I was having a great time. One of the best nights I'd had in a while. We were doing whippets, and we sent a friend. If you don't know what whippets are, they're basically CO2 chargers, like whipped cream chargers. Uh, it's nitrous oxide in little cans. You'd use those in your whipped cream maker. Um, and, you know, basically you put all your ingredients in, you put the CO2 on, and it creates the whipped cream uh, inside. But obviously you don't put any ingredients in, you just huff the gas and, you know, get this awesome wah-wah feeling, like wah-wah-wah. Um, but, you know, we had sent a friend to go get more whippets. So I let him use my car. They went out there. I told him, look, whatever you do, don't park in the Floral Express parking lot next door to this store because people get towed there all the time. Just don't do it. Of course, sure enough, they go and park right there in that damn spot. So while I'm blowing up and having a really good time, someone's like, hey, uh, phone's for you. And I, I pick it up and it's the Alachua County Sheriff's Office. And they're like, you know, are you Brian Moore, blah, blah, blah. And, well, uh, are you aware that uh, there's somebody driving your car who has a suspended license? And I'm like, yeah, no, I had no idea. I, I literally didn't know. Um, I thought everything was fine. And so they said, all right, well, we're going to leave your car here. You know, you can uh, come and get it or have somebody come and get it for you. And, and um, you know, we'll, we won't, you know, tow it or anything, but you need to be here in an hour or so. So, you know, quickly I tried to get myself together and get a couple friends. I think there was one person there or there were two people there that were sober that hadn't done anything. So they drive me up there, and I didn't drive. I just got in the passenger side of my car, 
And the cop warned us and said, hey, there's an APB out on this car just so you know, so you'll probably get pulled over again on your way home. And sure enough, they pulled us over again just to make sure because they knew the guy who they had, you know, who was driving my car was really messed up. And um, so they just figured, you know, uh, whoever's coming to get the car is probably going to be messed up. Thankfully, we had our designated driver and so got my, my car home safely. But Man, I've had some crazy, crazy nights, some crazy experiences, and uh, I'll definitely delve into more of this stuff. If you guys like these stories, again, uh, be sure to let me know down below, and I will try to always have something fun to put out. And if there's certain kinds of stories you want to know about, let me know. I've got uh, just just about something from everything, from a wide range of, uh, of crazy life events. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, you know, I appreciate all of your support. You make me want to do these videos all the time and I'm, I'm trying to get better about it uh, now that I'm getting over this cold and stuff hopefully I'll start feeling better and I can get back into the swing of things again but uh, again anyway this one's for all of you salute definitely a, a pretty pretty good beer uh, it says give our nut sack a taste I gotta say uh, I've never really tasted any nut sacks but this is a pretty tasty one for sure uh, anyway again hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and if you have any questions comments feedback anything like that uh, leave them down below always love interacting with all of you and uh, as always stay toasty my friends